Hi everyone, Lagos Housewife here. Today we are starting a new series, a new Monday series. It will be only on Mondays and that's Bible stories. And I'll be starting off with the story of Jeroboam, son of Nebat. Now, he was the very first king of the divided Israel when Israel had split from Judah. Okay, you know, when Solomon was king and he married many wives, and so the Bible tells us that towards the end of his years, he turned after the gods of his wives and stopped following God. So God was upset with him and was like, he will take the kingdom away from him. But because of David, he will take the whole kingdom. He will leave Judah with him. So God sent the prophet Ahijah to Jeroboam. Jeroboam was an, an official in Solomon's uh, court. He was in charge of tax and labor and everything like that. So God sent the prophet Ahijah to him. So the prophet Ahijah went, tore his robe into 12 pieces and told him, take, 12, uh, take 10 for yourself that God will give you the 10 tribes of Israel. But because of his servant David, he will remain Judah for David's lineage because Solomon has turned away from him. So he's taking the kingdom away from him. Of course, when Solomon heard, he tried to kill Jeroboam. So Jeroboam ran to Egypt. Why are they always running to Egypt? Every time they are running from something, they're always going to Egypt. I need to look into that. <laughs> so that's by the way. Then later on, after Solomon died, Solomon's son, Rehoboam, became king. So Jeroboam heard in Egypt and he came back to Israel. And then the people in Israel that had been taxed by Solomon, they went to, they called Jeroboam. They said, go before Rehoboam and tell him he should reduce the tax, that the burden is heavy on us. So they went to Rehoboam. He now told them, okay, he has heard come back in three days for my answer. And then he consulted the elders and the elders were like, reduce their burden, lessen the tax and they will be beholden to you. They will now be loyal to you. He said, hmm. He now went to the younger, his age mates, not the elders now, his age mates. And they were like, eh? Tax them even more than your father, as in do it very hard on them. He decided to listen to the young men's advice. And the Bible said, God caused this soul so that what he wanted to do to hand over the kingdom to Jeroboam will be, will happen. And so when Jeroboam and the Israelites came and they said, okay, oh okay, king, what have you decided? He said, I'm increasing the tax. You will be paying double what you were paying before. And the people left, they now said, it's like, we do not have a portion under this king. Let us kuku separate and make Jeroboam our king because he relates with our pain. He was even the one that went before the king for us. And that was how Jeroboam became king over the 10 tribes of Israel. And Rehoboam was left with only Judah and the half tribe. And then, so... Rehoboam gathered his army. He wanted to go fight. And the word of the Lord came to him and said, No, do not go to war against your brothers. Israel is still your brothers, even though you are now in Judah. So they did not go to war. And that was how Jeroboam's reign started in Israel. And Rehoboam was ruling in Judah. Now, this is where the issue now happened. Jeroboam, that God made king, he now looked. You know, then everybody used to go and worship in Jerusalem. He now looked and said, ah, if my people are still going to Jerusalem to go and worship, they might decide to start serving real Guam and I will no longer be their preferred king. He now went to make idols and put them in the temple and said, people of Israel, this is your God that brought you out of Egypt. This is the one you should be worshipping, not the God in Jerusalem. No need to be going to Jerusalem again. And you know, I just thought, I, when I read this, I just shook my head. I said, God that made you king, from nowhere, 
you were not from the lineage of kings. You had no, there was no way you could have become king at all, but God just selected you. And you somehow think he's not capable of keeping you as king. In fact, God promised him, said, if you walk in the ways of David, my servant, he said, I will establish your lineage forever. He even saw the example of God even saying, he won't take Judah away because of David. So he should have known that him keeping to God would have established him. But no, he decided to do self-help. And that was when it occurred to me that a lot of us are like that. A lot of us. The blessing that God gives us, all of a sudden, we think it is up to us to secure it. God gives you a job miraculously you prayed for it and it provided the job and then you get there as you uh, as you're working you, uh, uh, a temptation now comes to do uh, cor something corrupt and all that may be demanded by your boss and you've been like hey if i don't do it my boss will sack me was it the boss that got you the job in the first place you know we can point fingers at jeroboam but the truth of the matter is a lot of us do things like that God will bless you with something. Then you will now be going out of your way, doing dubious things, doing dishonest things, ungodly things to keep that blessing, to secure that blessing. He will provide money for you. All of a sudden, you will turn stingy. You won't want to give it away because you'll be like, ah, if I use it to help this person, what will I have? When the Bible says, what do you have that you will not give him? If you were given, why then do you behave as if, as if it was not given to you? A lot of us behave like Jeroboam. Even as in, I just sat down that day and I thought about it and I was like, but you see the story didn't end there. A lot of other things happened and of course we know Jeroboam's reign ended. He died, his son became king, his lineage was totally destroyed and everything. But then I started noticing a pattern as I was going through the book or uh, the books of first Kings and second Kings. Every time a king turned away from following God, the Bible will report and he followed in the footsteps of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, who caused Israel to sin against God. I cannot count how many times I saw that phrase again and again and again in the book of 1 Kings, 2 Kings, 1 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles. And he followed in the footsteps of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, who caused Israel to sin against God. And I thought to myself, what a legacy. Ah, what a horrible, horrible legacy that that was what he was known for. That was what his name now became as the person who sinned against God and caused others to sin against God. And you know, on the other side, anytime a king did well, the Bible will report and he did and he followed in the footsteps of David who served the Lord. He followed in the footsteps of David who served the Lord. And I said, see two different legacies. And it started me thinking, what legacy are we leaving when we are gone? Do you know Jeroboam never knew this was what will be said about him after his death? He was not even there when they were saying it. But this thing continued for thousands of years, for years, hundreds, generations. That was what his name kept being remembered for and I think I thought to myself I said what legacy are we leaving it's something all of us should think and you know I was jokingly talking about it I said hmm, will it be said of some parents and they'll say ah ah it was it was my parent that got me eating unhealthy that made me addicted to soda that caused this sickness it was it was will you be known as someone that starts a pattern of sickness in your family will you be known as someone who corrected a pattern of unhealthy eating because by the time you I, of course you know i'll link it to health definitely that's my own <laughs> that's my own path because many of us when we talk about it will be like, eh, my grandmother ate this, this, this. My grandmother drank minerals every day and she lived long. 
and she did that. Is that the pattern you want to continue in your family? Drinking soda, drinking unhealthy, drinking uh, minerals. You see what you're already saying of your mother. That's a legacy she left. A, a legacy that is not good because drinking minerals is not healthy. And by the time you are linking it to your grandmother, you are already establishing that legacy. Did she ever think when she was alive that it would be said of her that she used to drink minerals every day? Imagine. Why don't you decide to be the person that starts a legacy of healthy living, of obeying God, of doing right, of integrity, of being honest, of helping people. Let it be what you are known for is good in your family. Let it be said, ah, my great-grandmother used to uh, eat unhealthy, but my mother changed all that. She taught us how to eat healthy. My great-grandfather used to do this. Used to, I mean, some of, so many of you, you will, say, uh, the, you, will see the, you will see the patterns. I would think it's demonic. It's not necessarily demonic. It's all this, just like Jeroboam, just chose to go away from God and to establish a wrong legacy. That's what many of us are doing. Some of you, the same the same bad things your father did in marriage. They say, yeah, my, fa my father told me, your wife is not your family. Imagine such a legacy. And that's what you are carrying on in your own family. Now, come on, we should do better. Look at the legacy of David. Even with all the wrong things David did, but look at the legacy. Every time a king did right, God will say, he walked in the ways of my servant David. Every time a king did wrong, God will say, and he followed in the footstep of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, who, who led, who turned Israel against God. Think of these things. Two messages I want you to get from this. Number one, God gives you something. He's the only one capable of preserving that thing. Don't try to help God and then go into unholy things. Number two, what legacy in every area of life are you leaving for your family? The Lord will bless us. The Lord will help us. And the Holy Spirit will continue to help us in the mighty name of Jesus. I'll see you again on Monday with another Bible story.